something to arrive at a new vision of your future. If you were wanted to arrive at a new goal or new vision of your future, you'd have to change something about yourself in order to get there. And you'd have to change the way you think, the way you act, and the way you feel. Take the time before you start your day and say, okay, before I grab my cell phone, before I get up and run through my routine, you know, my automatic routine where people are on automatic pilot and a, and a habituation of what they did yesterday and their body's dragging them into the same predictable future based on what they did in the past and they've lost their free will mm -hmm. to choose, to become conscious to a set of automatic programs. Well, if the familiar past is the known and the predictable future is the known, there's only one place where the unknown yeah. exists exists and that's the sweet spot of the present moment. So if you said, okay, let me get present here. Let me remind myself of those thoughts I don't want to think. Let me remind myself of the behaviors I want to change. Let me review in my mind the emotions that caused me to move to a lower denominator. Let me become so conscious of that that I won't go unconscious again. Let me remind myself who I do want to be, how I do want to think, how I do want to act, how I do want to feel. And let me see if I can get so good at doing this with my eyes closed when I start my day that I can do it with my eyes open. Now, this river of change, you know, when people say, I can't predict my future. Well, the best way to predict it is to create it, not in the known, but in the unknown. So our research shows that if you teach a person to go a little further than where they normally stop, you know, when they get uncomfortable, they, they quit and reach for their cell phone, or they say, I'm busy, got too much to do. If you get people present, really, and you teach them how to stretch a little further, uh, and they get beyond that known, and there's no danger, there's no threat, there's no survival, the body actually begins to relax into to the present moment. Yeah. And when that happens, you see this over and over again. Energy moves right into the heart. And now the heart all of a sudden starts to beat with more order, more coherence. The autonomic nervous system mm. is no longer dysregulated from stress. It's starting to organize. And this feeling feels right, right? So then if you can sustain that state independent of the conditions in your environment, then you're mastering your environment. You're mastering your life. The response most of the times, if you don't change your response to the conditions conditions in your life, then nothing will change, including yeah. you. So a person who's living in chronic stress, they're mismanaging their attention because when you're in stress, stress is created by you can't predict something, you've lost control, or you have the perception that something's getting worse. And so look at the world we live in, right? In chronic stress, they don't know that, but now they need the arousal to wake them up, and then they need something outside of them, their cell phone, yeah. uh, TV, whatever it is, a movie, a drug, drink, whatever it is, to make that feeling go away. And once you notice the change in that internal state, you pay attention to what caused it. And now you're more reliant on the outer yeah. environment. So then is it possible then to teach a person then to create more coherence in their brain and heart? And we have data suggest you could change your brain in four days and make it work better. You can make your heart, you can trade resentment, impatience, frustration for elevated emotions and train people how to create more coherence in their heart. The side effect of that, doing that every day, we've done the research, will strengthen your immune system up to 50%. Why? Because your response isn't weakening you. So if you're not victim to your environment and you're less susceptible to anything in your environment, large or small or tiny or microbes or whatever. Yeah. So then when the person understands that, then they say, oh my God, this hatred, this fear, this anger that I've become so accustomed to, I literally have to change that. And when we do, you have to understand that the body's going to cry crave the familiar feelings because that's mm -hmm. what it's used to and this this is the work and people come to our work and they say i think i'm doing my meditation wrong because their body's getting aroused and they're getting frustrated and no 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 you're actually doing it right so now instead of reaching for your cell phone we'll give you something to do settle your body back down from that emotional state yeah. tell it it's no longer the mind that you're the mind and that's a victory the stronger the emotions we feel yeah. the more we pay attention to it so so every problem every person in your life that you have an emotion associated with, you give them your attention. So as you lower the volume to your emotions, you take your attention off your personal life. And the only way you're going to change your personal reality then is to get beyond your personality. And the only way you're going to change your personal reality is to get beyond your memory yeah. of all the associations to your personal reality. And if you're going to heal your body, you got to get beyond your body. So you got to get beyond its habituations. You got to get beyond its emotional responses. And you got to tell the body it's no longer the mind that you're the mind. And in the, in the beginning, 
training is tedious, but working with your body like training yeah. an animal, there, we notice that there's a liberation of energy and the person then who goes a little further uh, than they normally go instead of reaching for their cell phone or posting something on social media, they're going to stick with it and be curious. What's on the other side mm. of this limited thought? What's on the other side of this familiar emotion? Yeah. What's on the other side of this complaining and, and judging and analyzing? What's on the other side of it? Now, there's not a lot of agreement in society that says, Rangan, you have to sit with yourself and, and, be, and to know thyself, to become so conscious of those unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that I won't go unconscious again. And we found out that it's the overcoming process that is the becoming process. And people continue to overcome, 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 and then they become that other person yeah. biologically. You ask yourself at the end of your day, I do this every day, how'd I do? How'd I do today, bro? How'd you do? Did you do good? Where'd you fall from grace? Was it that caused you to go unconscious for the rest of the day? What was that moment? Now, if you're a student of life, you'll begin to contemplate, well, it was that person that said that thing, then I reacted, or this, I got this email, or things didn't go my way, and I started feeling angry or frustrated or fearful. The next time that happens, how could I evolve my experience? Now, you may have to search for some answers of the best model to build, or you may actually have a long contemplation and start to go, God, the next time that happens, I think I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to plan my behaviors. And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing what you're going to do begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep installing that hardware, the hardware will become a software program, which means you'll just start acting like a happy person. Why? There's no magic there. You installed the circuitry. So that's more important than the news. It's more important than answering any email or any text. It's more important than talking about your past or some dinner. If you can begin to just think about how you're going to do it differently, that's the building process neurologically already. So now you have to get conscious in order to do that. And it takes some time. It means you got to shut your cell phone off. You got to close your door. You got to take a break from everything out there and begin to practice. And so by experience, then you start noticing, oh, here it comes. Here comes the frustration. Or here comes the fear. And now we've given people the tools to be able to self-regulate, yes. to create brain and heart coherence. And so you see people say, excuse me one minute. I just gonna need a minute. It takes some breaths. They get back in. They connect to the energy of their future. This is incidental compared to where they're going. So they don't. And so, yeah, in the beginning, it takes a lot because yeah. it takes a lot of energy and awareness to stay conscious and not go unconscious. But if you're persistent and you're determined and you're sincere, you begin to figure it out. You begin to say, I am not going to give my power away to that person or that circumstance when I can use it to heal or to create a new future. And so people then won't excuse themselves and say, I had a hard day yesterday, I had a fight with my coworker or my ex, or, and I don't feel like doing the work. Well, that's the time to get back on the horse. Because because it, it's all of those times that we self-correct. Those are the most valuable moments to us. People who've had profoundly transcendental experiences where they, we say, got lit up, they connected, and their brain goes into very, very high coherent states and super gamma patterns that are way outside of normal, and they have a transcendental dental download or connection that's mystical. Then they look back at their entire life. They don't want to change one thing in their past because it got them to that moment. That's the moment the past no longer exists. Now, by the same means, they look back at their past and they see all those tough moments where they overcame themselves and they fall in love with that person. They don't look at the good meditations or the things that went well. They look, they know that it was those moments that got them to this moment. And I think then that's when they begin to understand that that all of the hard work, all the effort in who we become makes, no one can take that away from us. So then once we arrive at that level and we experience whatever the dream is or whatever we create, the next thing is, is do it until you fully enjoy it. And then when it gets boring or predictable, let's go again. Let's do something else. <laughs>